Recording. All right, I still feel like I look kind of blown out. I don't know why. I'm on my new fancy camera. But anyways, Good. welcome everyone to another edition of Talking Shit. <laughs> So we meant to do this before, I keep wanting to call St. Patrick's Day Thanksgiving. I don't know why, but before <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, but it didn't happen. But here we are. We're still going to give you a new show here in March. And when we were just chit-chatting, me and ACR, we were talking about um, paranormal stuff because she has ghost adventures in the back. And um, would you mind just kind of repeating what you just said about like... Yeah. Yeah. So I just have it on in the bag. This is my living room. Obviously. So welcome to my living room. I painted this. That's Britney Spears. And that's Posh Spice. I painted that when I was a teenager. This is my jacket. And then over here, I have Ghost Adventurers. I have it on all the time. I'm obsessed with Ghost Adventurers. I am slightly obsessed with Zach Bagans. So if Zach Bagans ever comes across this, I love you, man. Can I go ghost hunting with you? Please. I want to be a guest. I have this obsession that I want to be a guest on Ghost Adventures because I love that show. And then that kind of led off to us talking about ghosts and our beliefs and all that. And what I was saying before we hit record is like, as bad as I want, I want to be a skeptic. I want to be a skeptic. But my experiences since I was a child, like since I was like four or five, do not allow me to be a skeptic because I've been through some really weird stuff really weird do you have stories i do but let's hear let's hear one of yours uh, okay oh my gosh we're gonna be here like this whole chat you ready that's fine so one of my favorites to talk about um i always like to start my ghost stories with um i feel like i'm sensitive to energies things in houses i can usually tell when a place is haunted as soon as i walk in my place is not haunted Unfortunately, that would have been a lot of fun. But uh, my sister is also sensitive. She's 10 years older than me, and so is my niece. And she is 16 or 17. Now, there are separate stories that go along with that. But we all agree that we have something that a lot of people don't have. So my sister was living in Connecticut in 2008 or 9-ish. Um, I went to go live with her for like four months in Connecticut. And when I got to her house... First of all, this house was old, old, old. And it was one of those old Northeastern houses where like the stairs are not like to code. Like they're just like almost like a ladder. And I walked in and I literally walked in and I went, I looked at her. I said, it's haunted, isn't it? And she goes, yeah, we think so. So she was telling me stories that before I had moved up there with her for a little bit, she had the spice rack with like fall down or the cupboards would be open which number one that's poltergeist activity that's terrifying because that means it can hurt you um so in this house uh i'll tell you a really good one so i was uh applying for colleges at the time so i was sitting in the dining room like 2 a.m or something just do, 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 applying to colleges and at her ex-husband at the time had like back problems where he would uh like throw it out and i know my sister went to bed and i hear like a bowling ball or something really heavy fall in the ceiling above me and i thought that he fell because i knew that he was in his office um working so i run upstairs do, 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 to check on him i'm like dude are you okay and he like turns from his computer like yeah why and I was like, because I just heard you fall. There was like a bowling ball that just hit like, bam, like something fell. And he was a skeptic at the time. But my sister told me that the, that night when he went to bed, that that's when he started to get scared because there's no way I could make that up. And this is like a very mild, mild story of things that I've gone through in regards to paranormal. Um, at the same house, me and my sister were just chatting in the living room and her ex-husband had a bunch of instruments and like um, bongos and things like that. And that we would hear the bongos doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. And that we would stop talking and being like, 
why. Like we were, it was like, we were not scared. Like you would be like run out of the house. You were more kind of like, Oh my God, this is real. This is real. This is happening. Um, I've been touched, like shoved. I was visiting my tia, which is aunt in Spanish. I was visiting my tia in, in Peru and I was staying in uh, a, a family home where my grandmother had passed. Like a lot of people have passed in that house. And I'm like sleeping in my cousin's bed. You can imagine, I know I look like a vampire like this, but like I was sleeping kind of like this, like on my back and I wake up at night, something woke me up. Um, I don't know what it is, but I felt something in the room. I wasn't scared, but I was just kind of like, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Cause I've had things wake me up at night. Ghosts bother me since I was a child. So I was like, please just leave me alone. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. And what happened was the way my arm was, I felt literally, this is what I felt. A shove like this, where it like moved my whole arm and moved me. And I didn't scream. All I did was like stay there really, really stiff. And I was like, okay, it touched you. It's time to leave the room. And then eventually when I got the balls, I ran out the room and I like woke up my tia and I was like, can I sleep with you? Like something touched me, something shoved me. And she's like, no, it was just a dream. <laughs> just go back to sleep. Let me tell you, outside of that bedroom was like a second living room. You know how people have second living rooms outside of uh, the bedrooms on the second floor? I slept on the shittiest fucking couch for the next month. Like I did not, I was not sleeping in that room ever again. I think I only went in there to grab my things and get out. I have so many more stories I could take up. I could take up all the time. Do you have any, Shelly? I, I gotta know. Oh my gosh, I'm the same way. Since I was a girl, I can remember always with weird things going on. Um, I would have night terrors even. I was a sleepwalker, you name it. I was a sleepwalker. Yep. Been there. So it's funny because I have a couple of that like are the same vibe as yours with that big, huge, I don't want to say thump because it's like more than a thump. I envision it. Um, it's so crazy because the house that Danielle and I grew up in, um, we would be home by ourselves because my mom was a single parent. So she was always working. So we're always home by ourselves. And upstairs, we'd always hear do, 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 like, do, 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 like running. And we're just like, oh. or it would just be the boom, like someone jumped off the bed, like hard. Yeah. And so we just go like, like you said, it's like, you're scared, but it's not like you're going to, you just kind of like, you freeze. Like, did you just hear that? Like, yeah. Ooh. You almost you think you're hallucinating. What's that? You almost think you're hallucinating. Yeah. And it's like, for me, I used to think that in my head, even though Danielle would be with me, oh, it's Danielle. She just like jumped off the bed, you know? But then my brain's like, no, Danielle's right <laughs> there. It doesn't. So it's like, I'm already trying to debunk like what it was. Right. So I totally get that. And then I heard the word on the street was is that um the Ooh, area was, where my mom like her house was or whatever that we grew up in there was like indio burial grounds there back in the day so that was like the whole thing and so when we first moved there i was nine years old and from preschool to sixth grade i was in private school and then after that I went to public school so once i went to public school I went to the school that was like kind of like in the neighborhood, you know, whatever. So I started to get to know people in my neighborhood because my mom was the type. I was never allowed to do anything unless it was church involved. So I never got to really go in people's houses or anything like that. So it was cool for me to get to know whatever. And that's when I started to like, and at first I felt like stupid bringing it up. And then people were like, oh, that happens at my house too. And then that's when like the whole thing. And that's when some people like, this used to be an Indio Indian burial ground back in the day. I bet everybody, like the reason people don't say anything, because this is the first time I ever publicly talk about my weird experiences like i will bring it up when i'm with some friends and it gets brought up and it's like okay i, I feel safe telling this because we all feel crazy we all feel crazy they're like because you even if you don't want to believe it you're like oh my god if i just tell this story like people are going to think i'm a nutcase but then you realize that this this is happening to people this <laughs> all the time all, all the, the time. time 
I have a real, I have a one that I think you'll get a kick out of because it happened at the high spouse house. I feel like I've been told the story by somebody else and I want to hear it from your mouth now. Because that, that high, the high spots house, ma'am, ma'am, there is something going on there. I have never actually big had a time. big time. I have never had an experience. It was more of a vibe and no one has to tell me anything about how they feel. You walk in and you're like, I almost, you know what? I'll let, I'm going to tell, tell the story because I could definitely add to that. Okay. Well, first of all, would you agree? Okay. This is how the high spot house makes me feel when you walk inside like this. Like, yes. it's just like, and you're kind of like, that's interesting. You put it that way. Cause I always felt like you could cut the tension with a knife. It's so thick. The is that what it is? Is that what this is? Like, I, I always express myself of like, oh, I feel like this or the area of, or where I was at felt like this. And maybe that's what it is. Tension it just felt like, tension. like right now sure. I'm seeing myself walking into that living room and it's just like. <laughs> That make I've never seen it explained like that, but it makes so much sense because that's exactly what it feels like. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna use it like I'm gonna use this to describe a house that's next. Time. It it makes so much sense, yeah. Um, so I did some customs. It was so much fun. If you guys go to goodvibrationsboutique.com, you can go and check it out and you can buy it. Um, you know there was like Francine was in it. Uh, Shannon, Daphne was in it, uh, Cindy Bobcat, um, gosh, I'm missing so many people because I'm just on the, but it was just a really good shoot. And I was one of the people who said that I was down to stay at the high spots house because everyone that was staying there was people I was really, really cool with or friends with. Yeah. So after the long shoot, we we're having so much fun at the shoot. Here we are. It's like a slumber party. And, um, Somebody gave me an Ambien to help me because I was having like some issues or whatever. And I had taken stuff like that in the past. So it was no big deal. I was like, yeah, that'll help me sleep because I knew I really wanted some sleep. So I went in this room and that's where like my room was. And I know that like Ambien and things like that can mess with you. Like I definitely know like I stopped taking it because it was giving me like nightmares and stuff like that. But um, so I'm not I've discounting taken, that. Part. I've taken Ambien though as a prescription and I do know, like, you know, the difference. Right. That's you know what my difference. point is. It's like, there's yeah. like, when it can mess with you chemically, cause you're just maybe whatever, or something's happening. So I'm laying there and then all of a sudden I hear these voices talking and I'm thinking it's actually your ex and his girlfriend mm -hmm. at the time. I'm thinking it's them up still like just talking and they're trying to be quiet. You know what I mean? Because the way these voices were, were talking like this and so i'm thinking oh they're trying to be real quiet like you know that's cool and so that's when so that's in me having this conversation with myself that's me waking up by the way by the way in case people who misquote how this night went so um i'm kind of having this conversation with myself and i'm just like man you know i'm really tired because i think at that time i just had a lot going on so sleep was like I was having a lot of insomnia and stuff. So I'm trying to get go back to sleep. And then it sounds like these voices are in the room. And so I'm thinking, are did they kind of tiptoe in here? Like they put maybe like I want them to know it's okay. Like I'm kind of up. So if like they need to like, and then I'm like, I put the blanket up to like look to tell them, and there's no one there. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, what? And then all of a sudden music starts playing really loud in the room, but there's no radio or anything. It's just like, I'm hearing this loud music and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And then I had this sensation of just being hot, like really, really hot, like to where it was just like, I, I it made me like have just like a panic attack. And I was so scared and whatever that energy was, it was so dark yeah but i got on my hands and knees and i crawled to the next room where francine was and i was like you have to let me sleep with you i'm freaking out and she was like oh no you're just like you had a bad dream. i was like no 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 and i think God, that we're you know, always just having bad dreams isn't that the case how convenient 
And this is the first time I've ever like really said it in detail. And I think people who think that maybe it was just like the ambient or I was just like, whatever. Um, I think that they don't realize that like, I was having these full on conversations with myself to debunk what I'm thinking is just, you know, two people who are trying to not wake me up because they feel bad. Maybe they need to get something out of the room. Like I was having all these thoughts. So it's like, it was, I had time to wake up from this dream if that was the case. Yeah. And what really tripped me out was that feeling of like the room was just hot. And it's just like, when it got hot, I'm not saying the room turned red, but like, you know how your brain works sometimes? Like maybe if like you burn yourself, maybe, I don't know about you, maybe I'm just weird. Or like when you get really mad, you see red. For a not second, really like, you know, it's like, like it's like a thing, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm a weirdo, maybe we're weirdos, but like, you know, or sometimes like somebody <laughs> has yelled in front of me and I see like a red spark. Like, I don't know, that's just what's up. So it's like, to me, the room didn't go red, but with that heat, it felt like the room just turned red. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? It was very suffocating. And I just thought that was so weird. And then a different time, years later, I was walking up and I was thinking about that time being creeped out and it just was like, okay, whatever. And I was in the house by myself and I was staying there for like a week. And again, years later, whatever, some of the same people don't even live there anymore. I swear to God, you know how there was like that bathroom and then there's like rooms here and like here. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. So in the corner right there, I swear to God, there was a bat. And it wasn't a real bat though. It was almost like cartoon like. And I was just like looking at it and I was like, what the hell? And it, all of a sudden it just like, it was like there and then it like wasn't. And then I remember telling, Ooh. go ahead. Ooh. Okay, you're talking about that corner. Okay, where you're facing the bathroom and the, the bedroom doors and that corner up here. Okay, I would always walk by there at night when I would stay the night with my ex and I always felt like in the corner, there was like a black cloud or something that only my third eye was seeing. Oh, you are the chills right now. <laughs> we, okay, you guys, anyone who's watching this, we've never had this conversation before. And I actually have never told anybody that. And now that you're saying that corner, I'm like, oh, that corner. I know exactly the corner you're talking about. And oh, your God. ex makes fun of me to this day about it. He's like, oh, because someone made a joke because at the time, you know, when I went the first time, Daphne had lived there. So someone was like, oh, it was Daphne, blah, blah, blah. And like, it was a joke with, I can't even remember who said it, like whatever. Like it was just clearly a joke because they were like, okay, a bat right there. <laughs> so like, um, he, your ex, He's even said it to my face. He's like, oh, like that time you said you saw this bat and it was like Daphne. And it's like, no, bitch. No. No. Uh, you know what? Okay. If, if this ever gets to Zach Bagans, I propose that Zach Bagans and his team get... Well, me and Shelly will come along as extras to help you ghost hunt. We need to go ghost hunt the High Spots house. Oh.